What is up, everyone? Zach here bringing you Team Taste Game of the Day. You want to taste? Today, on the left, we have Josh playing Tapu Koko, and on the right, we have Zach playing Ninetales Decidueye. All right, so this Ninetales Decidueye deck has been working out pretty well for us. Um, it's been doing well over in Japan, and I really kind of just wrote it off as like a we one of those weird Japanese decks. But then uh, our buddy Andrew Mahone was playing Ninetales Decidueye Valplume, and he took it to a top four leak. Uh, top four finish at a, the Nick Bailey Open last weekend, and um, we were kind of playing around with it, and kind of realized we weren't getting Vileplume out as much as we wanted, so we thought, hey, maybe dedicate those spaces to a little more consistency on the VS Seekers and all that whatnot. Um, yeah, so just going to get right on to do it. Zach played to Bridget, got his army of Rowlets uh, ready to go, and his full picks is out there. Now, the cool thing about Vulpix, which I'm sure a lot of you know, it's a first attack for no energy, searches your deck for any two Pokemon and puts them into your hand. So it can just get you out of almost any dead draw situation at all. You can go look for your Tapu Leles, your Shamans, or if you have Forest out, you can get your like Dartrix Deciduous. It's just a super good attack. Um, so Josh is going to go on, fail and Elixir, kind of sucks. Um, Josh's goal is to get a bunch of energy on board and then play the Tapu Cocos down and needs to use its ability Arrow Trail to push it up into the active and collect all the energy from his board. So that, gonna go ahead, play Sick Bolt more, gonna Ultra Ball a couple cards away. Um, Zach's just trying to build up some Decidueyes right now, use, uh, its Feather Arrow to spread damage. His Nine Tails is active, so this is a rare game where you didn't have to use, uh, Full Pix's first attack. Um, Zach's gonna go ahead and grab a Shaman. Now for Nine Tails GX, for those who you don't, blah, 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 words are hard. So <laughs> Nine Tails, a double colorless. It hits 50 anywhere on the field, or your opponent side of the field. So the synergy there is you're gonna be dropping the Feather Arrows and then gonna hit for the extra 50. So there is Zach's gonna drop one Feather Arrow and actually hit for use Ice Blade for 80 onto the active Tapu Lele because of the choice band. Josh is going to go ahead and say nope, and then Zach and himself. So both players are going to drop to their six cards. Zach's trying to find his forest and the rest of his decision right now. Tapu Coco can start hitting some mean damage out of nowhere, really. The goal of his deck is to not get one shot. That's why we're playing the Aether Paradise Conservation Area. You take uh, 30 less damage from attacks against your uh, basic Lightning and Grass Pokemon. Now, we were playing Rough Seas, but with Tapu Koko, you, if you don't get one shot, then you're in a pretty good spot where you can just play another Tapu Koko down and be ready to attack right away. So... We're playing the high count of the Aether Paradise to hopefully mitigate that damage. Um, Josh is going to play a Max Potion. Going to deny the prizes to Zach. Zach's going to attach Choice Band, attach another energy. Uh, use Field Blower, knock off the EXP share and Choice Band. Play down the forest, and then Sycamore. Looks like Zach's getting some pretty good cards. <laughs> Zach can evolve up onto the Dartrix. So he's got a Float Zone to attach to it. Another float zone to attach to the Vulpix. Now this list is only playing two Ninetales right now. So usually you don't want to bench more than and then three Vulpix, so that Vulpix is hopefully gonna be a Ninetales one day. <laughs> His X and a Feather Arrow and Ice Blade that bench shaman. <laughs> Josh is gonna bump the forest again and play on trying to get those happy cocos online, but can't seem to find them or the energy. It's his third turn and only has one energy on the field. That can be kind of brutal. Josh going to draw up. Oop, I see at least one energy. Now if he can hit an elixir too, he can get in a Coco attacking. Nope. Alright, so Josh is going to field blower the choice pans away. Don't want those pesky choice pans. And then going to max potion the shaman, denying even more prizes. And as he looks like he's going to pass it on to Zach. <laughs> As that goes, oop, found my Dark Tricks, or my Decidueye line. Yep, gonna attach a double colorless to the Decidueye. Now, in this deck, Decidueye is just as bad of a main attacker as the Ninetales is. <laughs> so, that gonna double drop. You see Feather Arrows onto that Shaman, and then 
hit it for 50 with the ice blade. Oh, there Josh goes. Playing down the Tapu Kogo uses his, his ability Arrow Trail. And going to play another run. So Josh is just trying to find one more energy to use uh, his attack. Now, Tapu Koko for three energy. I think Lightning Lightning Colorless does 130 with no added effects. Whereas GX Attack does 50 times the number of energy on your opponent's side of the field. So there, Josh finds his energy. Gonna look search, I get a couple more energies on the field. Yep, hits that one, attaches it to the Rakow. Rakow's just a really good all around attacker. It always has been. It's always been just trying to get it um, set up and attacking. So, I know a lot of the Japanese players are playing it with Electrode, but I just haven't found it necessary yet. So, Josh is gonna use the Tapu Koko's GX attack. Uh, Tapu Thunder. Take that big uh, 310 damage knockout. <laughs> Zach's gonna play down his forest. He already has, or he has, ooh, and then just gonna play down the Dartrix and Rowlet. He's trying to get his fourth Decidueye set up, which is 80 damage anywhere on the field to turn, which is crazy when you can get that set up. <laughs> Zach's looking through his discard. I think his last Decidueye is in there, so he's probably looking for a Revitalizer or a um, Rescue Stretcher. There we go. Yep. <laughs> so Zach's going to retreat into his fully set up uh, Decidueye and then use two... Feather Arrows and a Razor Leaf. Yep, that's what it looks like. So, so Josh plays down the Tapu Koko. This is where the deck is really good. You can just keep cycling attackers and denying prizes. Um, gonna attach Choice Fan onto the Tapu Koko. So his Tapu Thunder thingy. Um, Sky High Claws will hit for 160, which is a really weird number to hit in the Pokemon Trading Card game. There's a lot of things with like 170 HP or 180 HP, but not much with 160, like Jolteon, I think. But besides that, not much. Um, oh, another big thing about the Decidueye Ninetales deck. Ninetales is GX attack, moves all uh, damage on the Ninetales over to the defending Pokemon, where it's almost like a Mewtwo damage change, but you don't get the damage back. It just adds on to the defending Pokemon. So against something like Tauros, you can just take a couple... Um, horn attacks and then just one hit it with its GX attack. Really good. So Josh going to attach an energy to the Raikou. Looks like he's debating on if he wants to play a couple more cards. Maybe. Not sure what he has his hand. It's all that he's supported for turn. Maybe looking for that max potion for that bench Tapu uh, Coco. But let's see if he can. Yep. Oh, okay. He does have an Ultra Ball. He was debating on whether or not he wanted to throw away that VS Seeker. <laughs> Um, gonna grab a Shaman. Gets that famous setup for six. So good. <laughs> um, yep, Josh gonna set up for six. Gets the high five, as is tradition. Um, looks like he whiffed the max potion. I don't see a bunch of, uh, gold in his hand, so. Josh is gonna leaf blower. Yep, gonna field blower the stadium and the float stone. Ooh, I think Zach Fred discard the stadium. I blame Josh for uh, not pointing it out. <laughs> um, yep, so then Josh is going to rescue Stretcher or Jolteon back. It's really nice to have it on the field for free retreat. And then going to Sky High Claws for 160. Yep, Zach's going to rescue Stretcher to get his fourth Decidueye. Going to retreat into a fresh Decidueye now. I believe the yep four Feather Arrows and the Razor Leaf will hit for exactly 170 on the one-hit knockout. Leaving Zach down to two prizes. All he needs to do now is take out a Shaman or that heavily damaged Tapu Koko. Um, Josh is going to really want probably another Tapu Koko, but he's not in a great spot. He's going to need to N, find a Tapu Koko, find a Max Potion, and Lysander the Decidueye. So I don't really think it's that uh, plausible. Oh, he does have his uh, Raikou set up and ready to attack. Um, let's see what Josh has. Ooh, it doesn't even look like he has a VS Seeker. The shame in the previous turn kind of really hurt him. Yep. Nothing Josh can do except Sycamore play Kooky, it looks like. So, Josh is gonna Sycamore away. Yep, he's probably just gonna put the Raikou and attack with it. Hope Zach has no way of getting around it. <laughs> and there's Zach putting the... 
Lysander on top of his discard, yep, saying, yep, I got the knockout on the Shaman or even the Tapu Koko since you missed the Max Potion. But yeah, this is, uh, I think the deck I'm probably rolling with for the League Cups this weekend. I played Aqua Box last weekend and it didn't really do that well for me. Um, I don't think it has, a, it has a spot in the meta right now, it's just not, it's time to shine. Um... Deck profile for this the Sidride Ninetales deck will be up soon. It's based on uh, a couple of the Japanese lists that were going around, but we had to take away like Zerasic and AZ and a couple other of those XY on cards. But remember, like, comment, share, subscribe. Um, let me know what you guys want to see next, what kind of deck profiles you want to see. All that good stuff. Later.